Okay, looking on to the next part of chapter 11, which is getting into measuring things like surface areas and volumes of different three-dimensional solids. And today we're going to talk about surface areas of prisms and cylinders. And we've already talked about the different names for prisms and how you can look at prisms. Uh, we're going to introduce something called an oblique prism this time, which is just a prism that is slanted. Uh, and an oblique prism could have any base. However, if the base is a parallelogram, uh, we can show off our nerdism. Uh, there's another word for that. It's called a parallel piped, and you don't really need to know that. I just think it's kind of a cool word. So a parallel piped is a uh, 3D is a um, 3D solid with all faces parallelograms. Probably should have had that one in here earlier. Uh, and I don't even know why I'm wasting my time doing that because it's you don't really need to know that. But boy, that's a fun word, isn't it? Anyway, so on we go. Uh, the altitude of a prism is the distance, the perpendicular distance that joins the two bases. And so I worded that in a weird way, but to fill in the blanks uh, in a more coherent way. It is the perpendicular segment that joins the planes that contain the bases um, easiest to think of it is just the distance between the bases and do remember that altitude or height, which is another word for altitude, uh, must be measured with a perpendicular segment. So if you do have that oblique prism or a parallel pipette, you must look for that right angle, which will be drawn to an extension of one of the bases. So the plane of that base, uh, the formula for surface area, when you are dealing with a prism, you are simply finding the areas of all the faces and boy, my nose is itching. Um, you're finding the areas of all the faces of the uh, polyhedron and you're adding them together. However, in the case of a prism, it does have a nice little formula. It is two times capital B and we used a capital B for a reason, uh, plus P times H and the capital B is the area of the base. And do remember that the bases of a prism are the two shapes, are the two uh, sides that are parallel and congruent. So for this triangular prism right here, the bases are the triangles because those are the congruent sides that are parallel to each other. Why did you straighten that out? Um, and in a, well, a, a rectangular prism, you actually have a lot of options for the bases. Um, typically people just choose the top and the bottom because that's how we like to think of bases. The pentagonal bases here and here and the hexagonal, it will be the hexagon on top and the hexagon on bottom. Those are your bases. So make sure you're identifying the correct base as we are working through the surface area. P would be the perimeter of that base. And then H is the altitude or the height of the prism, which is also ref referred to as the lateral edge. And that will be the length of one of these edges that connects the two bases. The length of the edges that connects two bases. Why are they making announcements in the middle of a class? They apparently changed their minds. All right, so on we go. And let's put this into practice some. So we're going to find the surface areas of these prisms. And I strongly encourage you, until you have these formulas completely committed to memory, to rewrite the generic formula every single time you use it. The more you write it, the more likely you are to remember it. And now I need to figure out the area of the base, the perimeter of the base, and the height of the prism. And for this rectangular prism, it is easiest for me to choose the bases as the bottom and the top. So there is my base. There's its parallel base on the opposite side. And if those are my bases, the height would be five. And the area of the base, the base is a rectangle that appears to be a rectangle. We'll assume it's a rectangle. There's no right. We're going to put right angles here. There. Now it's a rectangle. <laughs> Showed you. Uh, so we have a rectangle and the area of that base would be four times three, which is also known as 12. The perimeter of that base would be two times four plus two times three, eight plus six is 14. And now I simply throw all of that into my surface area formula, which is two times the area of the base, which we decided was 12. I guess we didn't decide that we figured was 12 plus the perimeter of the base, which is 14 times the height of the prism, which is five. Throw all that in a calculator. 24 plus 70 is 94. I did that in my head, which is ridiculously dangerous. Is that right? I'm going to cheat. I have the answers right here. <laughs> I'm right. All right. Uh, and if units are provided, always include units in your answer. So I'll be centimeters squared. Onward we go to number two.
We have a triangular prism. And for this one, we do not have any options for the bases. We must use the two triangles because those are the congruent polygons that are parallel to each other. So there are the bases. And for the area of that base, that is a right triangle. You see that little right angle and the base and the height of that triangle would be four and three. They are perpendicular to each other. So B would be one half of three times four. That's half of 12, also known as six. Um, the perimeter of the base, uh -oh. now I need this length right here. I don't have that, but this is a, uh, a right triangle and I can use Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully you have this one memorized already because this is the nicest of all of the Pythagorean triples. You should know that the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of three and four is five. And so the perimeter would be three plus four plus five and seven plus five is 12. So now all I need is the height. The height of this prism would be the distance between those parallel bases. So height is six. And I can throw all of that into my surface area formula to give me a final answer of two times B, two times six, plus the perimeter, which was 12, times the height, which is six. And that is uh, 12 plus 72 is 84. I think so. Let's see here. 84, that would be in centimeters squared. And I'm cheating looking at the answer. <laughs> I'm right again. I'm so good at math. How do I get to be so smart? I don't know. All right. Uh, for number three, to save time, I decided to go ahead and have that one pre-worked. And I'm just going to talk through number three. Uh, so we have here a uh, another triangular prism. The reason I didn't work this one again from scratch is because it was similar to number two. However, it's a little bit more difficult because they only gave you the hypotenuse of the base and they gave you an angle that was 30 degrees. Um, now, because I know my 30, 60, 90 right triangle proportions, it was easy for me to, and you see I drew my base right over here. The hypotenuse was four. I know the short leg, it was easy for me to get the other sides because the short leg is half the hypotenuse. So half of four is two, which I guess I could have carried that over here. This length is gonna be two. And the long leg is the short leg times the square root of three. And once I got those, I got all the information I needed to figure out the rest of the surface area. And you see how it works the perimeter of my base, which is two plus four, that's six plus two root three. Please remember you cannot add six plus two here. You cannot combine six plus two root three, just leave it as six plus two root three. The base, or I'm sorry, the area of that base is half the base times the height. That would be half of two times two root three, which ends up being two root three. And that really is capital B in the context of our surface area formula. Uh, and then the height is H. Throw all of that into your formula. And we have two times area of the base, two times two root three. We have six plus two root three is the perimeter of the base and the height is eight. I distributed my eight here. Eight times six is 48. Eight times two is 16. You do not do eight times root three. The root three just kind of comes along for the ride. Two times two root three is four root three. And then when you combine at the end, 4 root 3 plus 16 root 3 is 20 root 3. The 48 comes along for the ride. I personally prefer to leave my answer as in radical form. Units would be meters squared. However, if you threw that in a calculator, I got 82.641. Uh, let's move on to other bigger and better things. Number four, we have another prism and this time the bases are not top and bottom remember for the bases you are looking for congruent parallels faces and these triangles on top and bottom are congruent and parallel and so we have a triangular base and to work out the perimeter and the area of that base which by the way i'm going to rewrite the surface area formula it's two times the area of the base plus perimeter of the base times the height and I need to get the area and the perimeter of the base. Perimeter is really easy because they gave you all three sides. P is going to be, um, actually, I'm going to draw my triangle first. So here's my base. Five, five, six. Perimeter is going to be 16. I can add those pretty quickly. The area, however, we need the altitude or the height of that base. And we're going to draw one in here from this vertex, drop straight down here. And because this is an isosceles triangle, I know that the altitude from that vertex to the base would be, uh, it would bisect the base. 
and that'll give me a right angle. And the height of that I can now get with Pythagorean theorem because that height does bisect the, um, the, uh, the opposite side. And I'm going to look at this right triangle and we're going to go Pythagorean theorem again. And if you don't remember from about four minutes ago, the height must be four because three squared plus H squared is five squared. And we once again have that nice cute three, four, five right triangle. Uh, and now that I have the height as four, I can get the area of the base, the area of that triangle, which would be B in the context of our formula up here, one half. The entire base is six. Please don't accidentally use the three. And the height we found out was four. Half of six times four is 12. Um, and then finally, the height of our prism is the distance between the two bases or the length of one of those lateral edges. So there's my height of 12. And we can throw this into our surface area formula now. It's two times B, which was 12, plus P, the perimeter was 16, times H, which is four. And these are getting increasingly difficult. 64 plus 24 is 88. Centimeter squared, am I right? Oh, I'm way off, what did I do wrong here? Why did I write four? Oh my gosh! I see what I did wrong. Thank goodness I have these answers right here. Uh, the height of my prism is 12. This is one of the dangers of using a little h and a capital H in the same problem. I accidentally substituted the height of the base, so I need to put a 12 here. I need to put a 12 here. 16 times 12 plus two times 12 is too much for me to do in my head. The answer is apparently 216. Whoops. Watch yourselves there. All right. On to number five, we have a hexagonal pyramid, pyramid, prism. Uh, and I know the surface area is going to eventually be two times B plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. And I already know the height is H or a, a height is H. Now that's a genius. The height is 12. The perimeter I can get pretty easily because we have one, two, three, four, five. This is a hexagon. I think I said that a second ago. Uh, and the perimeter, P, the perimeter of the base is going to be six times the length of the base, which is 36. So I have two of the three pieces. However, the area of that base is what we did in the last unit. We have a hexagon. We've got to go with all that apothem stuff. So we're going to pick a point in the middle have a representative triangle here, and I want to use this to figure out what that apothem is. And once I have that apothem, I could then use the perimeter of that hexagon and the apothem to get the area of the hexagon. And I personally prefer to take that little triangle right there and draw it over here in a much bigger fashion. I'm going to draw in my apothem. And the apothem does bisect the opposite side here, so that's going to be a three. We know the central angle would be 360 divided by six, which is 60. So that's the entire angle, which means this angle is 30. And that makes this 60. And we once again have that nice 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The hypotenuse is six. That's the radius. I really don't care about that because I need the apothem. The apothem would be your short leg times the square root of three. And if that's the apothem, now I know that the entire area of the base, uh, so I'm going to say the area of the entire base, not just this one triangle, would be B equals one half the apothem, three square root of three, times the perimeter of the base, which is 36. And I think that ends up being 54 times the square root of three. Uh, and I'm ignoring the square root of three. I'm doing half of three times 36. I'm gonna double check that really quick. I feel really good about my answer. Half of three times 36 is indeed 54. So I do have the correct area of the base. And now I finally can throw all of that into the surface area. My surface area is gonna be two times the area of the base, which we just figured out was 54 square root of three, plus the perimeter of the base of 36 plus the height of the base, which is 12 times the height of the base, height of the base, height of the prism, which is 12. And we'll throw all that in a calculator. Let's see. So 36 times 12 is really the only one I can't do in my head very quickly um, because I'm being lazy. 36 times 12 is 432. 
Two times 54 is 108. The square root of three comes along for the ride. Units are meters, therefore surface area would be all of this in meters squared. I prefer the radical answer. If you punch that in a calculator to get a decimal, it would be 619.1. And that's really an approximation. I shouldn't say equals. That is rounded. And I'm just going to put that in the thought cloud because I, I still prefer that radical answer up here. So there we go with prisms. Whoops. There we go with prisms. Uh, let's go on to cylinders, which is really the same thing. It's even a little bit easier because with a cylinder, you know you're going to have a circular base. You don't have to worry about apothems and all the different formulas for the areas of the prism bases. And if you look at the surface area formula for a cylinder, it's the same. It's the area of the base, um, except they didn't say times the perimeter of the base. They said times C. Well, what could C be? By the way, um, B is still the area of the base. C is the circumference of the base, and the circumference of a circle is its perimeter. So it's really the same thing. And the height is still the distance between the two bases, the height of the cylinder. And just remember that the heights must be measured with a right angle. So if your cylinder is straight up and down, if it's not tilted like an oblique cylinder, then the lateral height right there would be the height of the cylinder. Otherwise, you would be looking for some right angle to indicate that you are looking at the height. And um, if you want to, you could, I don't think it's worth memorizing another formula, but the area of the base of a cylinder, of a, I'm sorry, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the, the circumference of a circle would be two pi r or pi d. I typically will just stick with this top one because we're going to, we need the radius for the area. May as well just continue using it for the circumference. Uh, so let's do a couple of examples of this and then we will be done. Is it a couple? Is it only a couple? Three. Oh yeah. Well, that's not it. That's a different one. All right. So two examples of the cylinder uh, and the surface area again, and I'm going to keep saying this, I recommend you rewrite the formula every time to area of the base plus the perimeter of the base. And in the case of a circle, that would be the cir circumference of the base times the height of the prism uh, cylinder. Height is H, the radius is eight. And so the area of that base would be pi eight squared. That's 36 pi. The circumference of the base is two pi times eight, which is 16 pi. And now I can just throw all of that in. Surface area is two times 36 pi plus circumference 16 pi times 20. We'll see that's 320 plus 72 is 392 pi. Am I right? Cheating again. No, I'm not. What did I do wrong this time? Did I just do that wrong in my head? Two times eight. Two times eight squared is not, oh my gosh, how do I get 36? Eight squared is 64. Wow, this is why you don't do math fast and why you don't do it in your head. Setting a bad example here. Okay, so that's 128 plus 320, which is 448. Perhaps I should take my time. 448 pi centimeters squared. I prefer the exact answer in terms of pi. If you want the decimal approximation, that would be 1407.4 centimeters squared. And seven, I'm going to do, I'm going to pause this and work it out really quick because seven is a repeat of six. Uh, do pay, pay attention to the fact they gave you the diameter. So the radius is going to be six. And then it's really, really, really similar to number six. Here comes the answer in about two seconds. And there you go. I told you two seconds. Um, so work it all out and it ends up being 252 pi inches squared or that is approximately 791.7 inches squared, which takes us to the last problem, which all they have done in the last problem is they've just relocated the unknown information. Every problem previous to this one, the unknown was the surface area. This time we have the surface area and we're looking for the missing dimension, which in this case is X. Uh, so I'm going to start with just the generic formula. I know that surface area is two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. In this case, it's a prism. Uh, and the height is X. So there's the height. 
the area of the base, I can go ahead and knock that out because the area of the base, this is a right triangle and they give me the two legs which are perpendicular to each other. So B, capital B is gonna be one half of eight times 17 and four times 17 is 98, I believe. I've already made a fool of myself several times. Is that right? Four times um, 17, 98. Holy cow, what is wrong with me today? 68. What am I doing? 68. Okay. Yeah. 68 inches squared for the base. Um, the only issue I have is I don't have perimeter and to get the perimeter, I need this length right here, which I want to call it X, but I shouldn't use X because X is taken. I'll just call that Y. And I know that Y is going to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle with legs of eight and 17. And so you get um, eight squared plus 17 squared is 353 equals y squared. And y is the square root of 353. I don't think that simplifies. Let me double check that. So I'm going to do square root of 353. Do this the lazy way. Trust the calculator. And no, it does not. Uh, so now that I have that length right here of y, I know the perimeter of my base is going to be 8 plus 17 plus the square root of 353. 8 plus 17 is 25 plus the square root of 353. And now I can plug everything into my surface area formula. Surface area we know is 616 equals 2 times the base of 68 plus the perimeter of the base, which is 25 plus root 353 times that missing dimension of x, and we will solve that. So 616 equals 2 times 68. I don't know why I keep trying to do stuff in my head because I've embarrassed myself enough. That's 136 plus the product. Oh, be careful here. That's all of 25 plus the root of 353 of x. And it's very tempting to add 136 and 25, but you cannot because that... 25 is being multi all of this is being multiplied by the x and you cannot add 136 to 25 before distributing that x and i really don't want to distribute the x so i'm going to go ahead and subtract 136 minus 136 and i think that's going to be 480 and it is so we have 480 is equal to 25 the quantity of 25 plus the square root of 353 times x. And then I will finish solving for x by dividing. Why did you do that? There we go. By dividing both sides by 25 plus the square root of 353. Divide by the quantity 25 plus the square root of 353. And when you throw that in a calculator, because I think I will on this one, this is just really ugly. I don't really feel like using conjugates to rationalize that denominator. Uh, if you When you throw this in the calculator, be very careful, depending on the type of calculator you have, it could be easier. But if you don't have a calculator that does a very nice top bottom fraction, so like with this calculator, I can very easily see that I am putting all of 25 plus the square root of 353 in the denominator and I left out the plus. So I need to go over and add that plus sign. And that looks good. If I hit enter, it gave me the decimal value of 10.962. And that would be in inches, wasn't it inches? Yeah, that's an in inches squared. If you do not have a calculator with a nice, cute, clean top bottom fraction, then you would have to make sure that when you do 480 divided by the stuff, you must, you must, you must remember to put that stuff in parentheses, 25 plus root 353. Close the parentheses because you want to make sure, whoops, I need to get out of my, uh, where's the delete button on this guy? There it is get out of my square root. There we go. Uh, you need to make sure that you are dividing by the entire sum of those two and you will get the same thing. If you don't do that, um, if you don't leave those parentheses, it'll do 480 divided by 25. Find that quotient, then it'll add the square root and it will be wrong. Um, and so that is everything. And I'm done making a fool of myself with all my mistakes. Y'all have fun.